بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل دلالة في النار Okay, in the last lesson we started the sixth uh, place in the seerah that uh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab has brought in this uh, book and this was the story this was regarding the issue of the apostasy which took place after the death of the Prophet Ali Salat Islam and Shaykh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab mentioned here how that there were some people who have been labeled as scholars and he's referring here in his time how in his time there were uh, groups of people who were taken as scholars wrongly whereas in reality they were devils and these people claimed that any person who just merely utters La ilaha illallah and he, he, he utters this statement that this person is a Muslim irrespective of whether this person even knew or understood a single thing about Islam or even if this person had even just a hair's amount of Islam with him meaning in his practice or even if this person uh, you know even explicitly stated that he you know, he, he doesn't act upon Islam, he has nothing to do with Islam and so on and so forth. So despite all of this, how there were some people in his time who claimed that such people are still uh, Muslims. And uh, then the Sheikh went on to explain how uh, even in a situation where these people would mock the religion, they would mock the Quran and they would, you know, uh, some of them would even reject some of the specific aspects of belief such as the day of resurrection uh, and things of that nature that even when these people explicitly stated the likes of these affairs then the so-called scholars would still consider them to be to be Muslims even though they were mocking the religion and rejecting uh, fundamental uh, aspects of the, of, of, of the belief so uh, despite all this, the Sheikh said, Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul that these devils, you know, they still claim that these people are, are Muslims, um, you know, just because they say La ilaha illallah. Then the Sheikh went on to explain how, the, uh, he went on to then <coughs> refute this and explain how, when we look in the seerah and we look in the very stories of the apostasy that took place after the Prophet Muhammad Islam passed away. And uh, he gives some examples. Uh, he says some some of the people when the Prophet Ali Sallallahu when he passed away, some some of the people they rejected the Prophet and they went back to worshiping idols because it, because they claimed that if he was a Prophet then he wouldn't have died. And other people they affirmed the Shahada, they accepted Muhammad Ali Sallallahu they believed in the Kalima, they, they expressed the Kalima with 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 tasdeek, with with belief. But at the same time, they believed in Musaylimah. Right, so they also affirm the prophethood of Musaylimah claiming or thinking thinking that he and the Prophet Ali Sallam had shared in the prophethood and likewise so the, the Shaykh explained how all of the scholars agreed that anyone who believed in Musaylimah was an apostate even if he was ignorant of the falsehood or the in, in invalidity of Musaylimah's prophethood, even if he was ignorant of that, that he is still, that the scholars have agreed that he is an apostate. And likewise, anyone who doubts about the disbelief of such people, then he, you know, he too is, 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 is a disbeliever. And uh, likewise, uh, uh, the Sheikh mentioned also the example of Tulayha. Tulayha was another person who claimed prophethood 
And the scholars again agreed that anyone who believes in nafs, then he is, is a disbeliever. But Tuleha, this individual Tuleha, then he was someone who Allah uh, favored. And so Tuleha repented from what he was upon and he came back to Islam. And you know, eventually he was killed in fighting against, uh, in, in a battle against the uh, Persians. So that was what was covered uh, last week. And those were the points that were made uh, last week. And to continue then and to finish off this uh, sixth place in the seerah in this lesson, Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Hab then continues and he says, he, he co- continues to give another example. He says that there were also some people who believed in a person called Al Ansi. Al Ansi, who was a person from Sana'a, Sana'a in Yemen. And this person was called Al Aswad Al Ansi uh, from Yemen. Uh, as the Sheikh Salih al Fawzan explains, and this, this individual was killed by Abdullah bin Firoz al Daylami. And this was at the, during the final uh, part of the life of the Prophet. And uh, so uh, this individual was killed, and Al Aswan Musaylima then he was fought against by the Sahaba in a battle, in the Battle of Yamama, which was led by uh, Khalid bin Walid. And they fought against him up until they eventually uh, killed him. And the Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Hab says that all of, all of the scholars, all of the scholars are, are agreed with respect to all of these different people that, we, that we've mentioned. Right? So all of, all of the different people that have been mentioned, meaning those who apostatized after the Prophet ﷺ returned back to worshipping idols, those who believed in Musaylama, those who believed... Uh, in Al-Ansi, those who believed in Tulayha, all of these people, uh, uh, the scholars are agreed that they are all equal. Meaning that they are all apostates and disbelievers. They, they are all in the same situation. So from them were those who rejected the Prophet Ali Salaam, returned back to worshipping the idols. And amongst them are other types, but all of them are upon, you know, they are in the same condition, they are in the same uh, situation and uh, the Sheikh just comments, Sheikh Salih al Fazan just comments, he says that the apostates are of various types and anyone who believes in any of these apostates, meaning anyone who affirms that any of these apostates are upon what is correct, like someone who says that whoever believe, believed in Musaylima, then he's correct in that, or whoever believed in Tuleha, he's correct in that, or whoever believed in whatever, he's correct in that. So anyone who believes them in, in what they are upon, then he too is a disbeliever. Even if he testifies that none has a right to be worshipped except Allah, then this will not even benefit him. Just just by saying it won't benefit him. And the Shaykh then says, even more severe in disbelief than these people are those who say, La ilaha illallah, and then they worship the awliya and the salihin. Then, going back to the words of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Habi says, again, another person, the last amongst them, was another person called Al-Faja'at sulmi And this person, he came to Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, and he said to him that he desires to fight against the Murtaddin, against the apostates. Again, this is in the time of the, the Caliphate of Abu Bakr, when you know the, 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 the various people, they reverted back to disbelief, and so in this time, this person he came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and he mentioned to him that he desires to fight against the apostate. And he requested from Abu Bakr to give him some aid to, to, to support him. So Abu Bakr supported him, he gave him weapons and other affairs. And then this person, he then went on and he began to turn upon Muslims and non-Muslims. Right? So those who were genuinely disbelievers or apostates and Muslims and he began to take their wealth right so he began to fight them and he began to take their wealth killing Muslims and Muslims so then Abu Bakr he prepared an army in order to go and fight this individual to go and fight this individual and when this individual when this person he came to realize that an army was being sent you know to, to fight against him he said to the army he said to the Amir of this army that you are the Amir, you are the Amir of Abu Bakr, and I too am the Amir of Abu Bakr. 
meaning that we've both been sent by Abu Bakr. So therefore, I, I haven't disbelieved. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't disbelieve. And so then the, the other Amir said to him that if you are truthful, then put down your weapons. Uh, submit your weapons and put, put, you know, put them down. So this person, Asulmi, then he put down his weapons. And uh, then he was sent to Abu Bakr. He was sent back to Abu Bakr. So he went back to Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr ordered that he be burned by the fire while he's alive. I put him to death in, 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 in this manner. Now, Shaykh continues, Shaykh Usama Muhammad bin Wahhab, he says, if this was the ruling of the Sahaba upon this individual for what he did, alongside the fact that he affirmed the pillars of Islam, five pillars of Islam, right? So he established the prayers, obviously he testified to the two, test- for the two, two testimonials, he uh, performed the five prayers and, and the other remaining pillars, three pillars, the fasting, the hajj, the zakah. Then, if this was the ruling of the Sahaba upon this individual, then what do you think, what is your view, what would, what would your opinion be concerning the one who didn't affirm anything from Islam, not even a single word, except that he just merely said with his tongue, La ilaha illallah. Right? Beyond that, there was nothing else. And at the same time, this individual... He still, he, he clearly and explicitly states that he disbelieves in the meaning of this kalima. Right? He disbelieves in the meaning of this kalima. And he clearly frees himself from the deen of Muhammad and from the book of Allah. Right? Because in, in the time of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab, there, there were people like this. They would say, La ilaha illallah, but they would free themselves from the deen of Muhammad al-Islam free themselves from the book of Allah and so on and so forth <coughs> and you know then, the, then, the, then these people they say that this you know this this is the deen of the present but our deen is the deen of our forefathers right, this, this is what these people say after, after you know rejecting all of these things and then the shaykh says after all of this after all of this these other people meaning these so, he's referring here to the so-called scholars, those people who have been referred to as so-called scholars. These people who are, you know, uh, ignorant, uh, you know, re- rebellious, you know, those who have turned on their backs and ig- ig- ignorant people. Mm-hmm. These people start giving verdicts, start giving fatwas, that those people, those who, whom we've, we've just described, that they are Muslims. You know, even if they explicitly stated all of these affairs, you know, even, and and, and, and that, that is that they are Muslims as long as they say La ilaha illallah and then the Shaykh says Subhanaka hadha buhtanun adheem that you know free are you meaning O oh Allah of all imperfections this is a great and mighty slander a great and mighty lie so the Shaykh Salih al Fuzan he comments upon this passage here and he says that there are some people who say that Islam is the deen of the present and as for us, then we are upon the deen of our forefathers. We are not upon the deen of the present. And these so-called scholars, these so-called misguided scholars say about these people that these people are still Muslims. Why? Because they say, La ilaha illallah. And, you know, the, 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 whereas in reality, you know, we've seen clearly that they free themselves from the deen of Muhammad and they say, this is the deen of the, of the present time. And then, the Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, finishes by saying, How excellent is what was said by one of the desert Arabs, the Bedouin Arabs, when he came to us and he heard about something from Islam. Right? So one of these Bedouin Arabs came, came to uh, one of the lessons of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab and he heard something about Islam. And he said, I bear witness that we are disbelievers. And he's, he means here him and all of the desert, the Bedouin Arabs like him. And I testify, and I you know, and I testify, I bear witness that the that the scholar who labels who who calls us as people of Islam that he too is a disbeliever. And this is where this is where the Shaykh he finishes the. 
uh, the sixth place and he says it is finished and all praises due to Allah the Lord of the worlds and prayers and, saluta- and, and, and salutations upon Muhammad his family and his companions and then uh, the Shaykh just explains Shaykh Salih al-Fuzan just explains that this, this uh, Bedouin Arab when he came to the lesson of the Shaykh and he, you know, he obviously didn't know anything about Islam he didn't know it properly and when he came to know what Islam was then he testified against himself that uh, b- you know, before he knew Islam that he was a disbeliever him and his group were all disbelievers and he also explained that anyone any person of knowledge or any so called scholar who claimed that you know, that you people are Muslims about, 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 these, about these people that he too is a disbeliever this is what, this is what the Bedouin Arab said uh, because the ruling of such people is that they, they are kuffar as well and this is where the, well this is where, where we finish the uh, sixth place in the seerah and just to summarize then that the sixth place in the seerah is 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 uh, how the various uh, types of people who emerged after the death of the prophet Ali Sallam who became apostates in a number of different ways either through rejecting the prophet because they claim that he died so therefore he can't be a prophet or because of believing in al musaylama even though they still believed in Allah and his messenger and, and the prophethood of the messenger or those who believed in Al-Ansi or in, uh, in Tuleha or even this, this last man, this, this Sulmi you know, who's, who, who sent on a mission but he began to kill Muslims and non-Muslims and, and take the wealth and the ruling of Abu Bakr upon him all of that shows that just to merely profess La ilaha illallah you know, uh, that does not make one a Muslim and when a person brings alongside that, that which is clear disbelief or shirk or anything which clearly invalidates Islam then the rest of his Islam will not benefit him in any single way uh, whatsoever and so this is how he's used the, these examples from the seerah to illustrate this point and to refute those ignorant and misguided devils who are, who are labeled as scholars when in reality they're not to refute their, their, you know, their, 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 their falsehood, and then in a similar manner, we can use the same thing when we intend to illustrate this to, you know, to, 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 to people in the course of in the course of that. So that's where the book ends, and then there are just uh, a number of questions at the end. Uh, we'll just most of them are not really relevant to to, to, to the topic, so we'll just choose. Uh, we'll just select a handful of questions, inshallah, to finish off the rest of this lesson. So. These are lessons that the Shaykh was asked after his uh, after his lesson on on, 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 on on this book. First question, a simple question, O noble, o noble Shaykh, what are the affairs that this, that that, that, are, that a student of knowledge should be focused upon? Uh, should he begin with the books of Aqidah? And the Shaykh answered that he should begin with something which is which is easy, that which is easy, and that and then that which follows it. He begins with the you know the small books. You know the very small, concise books that have been authored, and he reads them to the mashayikh, and then he moves on to other books which are more, uh, which are, which which are, which are more, you know, which are more comprehensive, and then he continues in this manner. He doesn't go straight to the long, detailed, lengthy books from the beginning, but he starts in small, you know, something small, and then something small, and then he expands in this manner in a, in, a, in a gradual, gradual way. Next question is, uh, what is your view concerning the one who says that the one who came with shirk and kufr, he does not become a disbeliever except after he is aware of the, aware of the issue, uh, except after he becomes aware of the issue, meaning that he falls into shirk and disbelief and so on and so forth. And the answer the shirk says that if he if he's a person, if he's a person who you know who who, who is ignorant. Like for example, he is in a place which is cut off, right? Like a land, remote land, which is cut off, and nothing has reached him. And this person can be excused. In that situation, the person can be excused. But as for when a person is in the land of the Muslims, he hears the Quran, he hears the Hadith, he hears the, the speech of the people of ilm, of the people of knowledge. Then this person is not to be excused by by ignorance, because the proof has been established upon him. Next question is, what is the ruling in, upon traveling to the lands of the Muslims in which the good is not commanded and the evil is not prohibited? And in which alcohol is sold 
and alcohol and, and songs and you know there is you know tabarraj meaning women openly not not covering and likewise free mixing and he intends to go there from the angle of like having like like a vacation or you know like for uh, for, for tourism and the answer is that a, 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 a land or a place which does not is, does not adhere to the religion doesn't practice its religion and within there there where when there are to be found open like lewd lewd things and open evils then a person it's not permissible for a person to travel to them because he will become uh, he will he will become affected by what by the evil which is there and whatever whatever afflicted the people of that land will afflict afflict him likewise next question is uh, is it permissible to narrate a weak hadith without explaining its condition to a people because the people do you know do, do not know but without, without having to go into explaining whether it's authentic or not authentic you know because the people do, wouldn't actually understand the answer the shaykh says the hadith the if the scholars have mentioned certain principles regarding uh, them uh, and they are as follows that first of all it is not to be ex- ascribed to the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like in an angle which makes it appear as if it is authentic you know in, in, in a way in which a person like is, is kind of resolute and f- you know firm that this is from the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rather he says it has been reported from the Messenger of Allah or he says it has been narrated in such and such a manner but he should never say Allah Rasulullah. He should never say the Messenger said, because this now is when a person says the Messenger said, it's as if now he is, you know, being firm and resolute that this is, in actual fact, a statement of the Messenger. When in, it, 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 it isn't, or it could might, might not be. Secondly, that second condition is that there must not be any isolated or individual judgment built upon that hadith. Right, because weak hadiths can't be used to build judgments upon. Only the, the rulings and the judgments can only be built upon correct sound evidences. So therefore, no ruling of something being halal or haram or any ruling of some sort can be built upon an, a weak hadith. Thirdly, the Sheikh says that it, it should be mentioned... Uh, it's mentioned in the context of just admonishing and reminding right so when a hadith contains uh, something of admonishment a person can mention it by way of admonishment then it can be mentioned from that angle only because to admonish and to remind is are two things which are which are desired and requested and the fourth fourth uh, condition is that it's, it's weakness it mustn't be a severe type of weakness. It mustn't be a weakness which is a severe type of weakness. And uh, some of the other scholars explain that the, the, the type of weakness which is, which, which is being referred to here is the weakness as it relates to a narrator's memory. Right? Not, for example, in a situation where a person has been um, you know, accused of lying or being un, un, untrustworthy or whatever in that situation but rather where, where, where the weakness is due to uh, the weakness in a person's memory as a result of which it doesn't reach it doesn't go, go to the level of being Hassan or, or Sahih so there, there are four conditions that the Shaykh has, has mentioned there um, Next question, the honorable Shaykh, there are some people who when they build a house, uh, they sacrifice something, at, you know, they sacrifice at the door in order to, you know, seek barakah, to make tabarruk, and in order to repel the evil eye. And this person is ignorant that this is uh, sacrificing to other than Allah, you know, this is shirk. So does this person become a disbeliever? And the answer the shaykh says, this person is to be commanded with repentance. It's to be said to him, this is shirk, and upon you is tawbah to Allah, 
Because obviously anyone who commits shirk falls into shirk, then he's, he's a mushrik. So the shaykh explains how this person is to be commanded to repent. Next question is regarding a woman, a woman who, who asks the question and says that a doctor has informed her that becoming pregnant in the future will have an effect upon some of her like functions in the body like liver and upon her bones and things like that and he and this doctor informed her that she should uh, withhold from be- becoming pregnant you know not, obviously not become pre- pregnant again so is it is it permissible for her the answer the sheikh said that when two trustworthy and reliable doctors two both agree so they both independently agree that in in her situation pregnancy is is going to be dangerous upon her is going to be a danger upon her then she can obviously use whatever will prevent her from becoming pregnant due to the saying of the prophet ali sallam la darar wa la dirar there's there's no there is no causing harm no mutual uh, you know reciprocating harm and due to the saying of Allah, the Most High, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْذِيكُمْ إِلَى تَحْلُكَ Meaning, that do not throw your hands into destruction. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْذِيكُمْ إِلَى تَحْلُكَ Do not throw do not throw yourselves into destruction. So, the important thing here is to make affirmation. Meaning, don't just take one doctor's word for it, but get two reliable, trustworthy doctors and get their independent opinion. And when that's confirmed, then obviously then you can act upon act upon that information. Final question is just on a person who what is your view concerning the one who describes the books of Shaykh al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Hab? regarding fiqh and aqidah and he says that these are books which are just repetitive it's repetitive and the answer is the shaykh says this person is in one of two situations either he's ignorant he's jahil he's never he's never studied these books nor does he know about them and uh, the answer to him uh, answer to this person would be that before he starts judging things and passing judgments upon things that he should study them and he should know them and so he doesn't start judging things while he's whilst he is ignorant the second situation is that this person has misguidance with him and in reality these books these books of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Hab actually refute his misguidance so what makes it clear that this person is actually he's, he's diseased he's diseased, he's ill and he doesn't actually want the cure Right, so he's got misguidance with him, that's his disease, and he doesn't want the cure, the cure which is in these books of Shaykh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. So we ask for this person that Allah guides him, we ask for guidance for him, and we advise him that he reads these books with, uh, you know, with uh, deep study and, and, and you know, uh, reflection, and that he asks about anything which might become difficult upon him within these books. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is the Shaykh finishes there. So that's the end of uh, this this uh, this treatise then inshallah and we'll stop the lesson there. And in the next lesson we'll probably move on to uh, another one of the Shaykh's small works inshallah ta'ala. Uh, inshallah, yes, uh, roughly about 7 o'clock, 7.15. Inshallah, yeah? Okay.